Back in 2013, Red Barrel Studios released the spooky, but short, first-person horror experience Outlast. But now they're back with a more ambitious sequel. So, is it worth it? Let's find out. Fear is subjective. What terrifies some might leave others chuckling. And there is the challenge in creating a horror video game, producing a visceral nightmare to disturb most of the audience. Outlast 2's method of intimidation is replicating prior successes, stitching together the tried-and-true themes of psychological, slasher, and supernatural fiction. But this collection of cliches underserves the moody atmosphere, piling on an ever-increasing amount of violence and shadowy avenues, while constantly breaking the tension with nonsensical escapes and lame interventions. Combined with an underwhelming stealth system, tedious exploration, and bland level design, Outlast 2 is a loud, bloody bore. There is something happening in the woods. Rumors of cultists and heretics and ideological opposition preparing for a grand ceremony. When the corpse of a young woman is discovered, the married investigative journalists Blake and Lynn travel to the scene of the crime. But when their helicopter crashes deep inside the darkened forest, the two become separated. With an army of deranged murderers on the loose and a prophecy set to expire, Blake will need to reunite with Lynn before the dark ritual can begin. While it could certainly be argued Outlast 2's narrative is an elaborate homage to other horror classics, its poor pacing and winding direction never established the paranoia and dread necessary. This is due to the game's general escalation. Is one maniac scary? Well, here's a bunch more! Oh no, a dead body! Now there's a pile of dead bodies! Most of the game's story is told through cryptic notes scattered throughout the compound. And what do these glimpses into deranged minds reveal? That they're crazy. Shocking. I know. But the plot also reflects on Blake's inner turmoil over his tragic past, manifesting into an empty school. Problem is, this is frequently used as a convenient out. Whenever the narrative writes itself into a corner, the protagonist simply vanishes out of trouble. More annoying are when the scenarios resolve themselves without any sort of build or thematic logic. Outlast 2's tale of a town gone mad doesn't work. It relies far too often on jump scares and never delivers on its numerous menacing threats. But it's the late game inclusion of real world issues that really pushes it into bad taste. Though telegraphed from the beginning, the story trivializes serious topics as shocking plot twists. Much like everything else, it completely fumbles the execution. And the gameplay is just as lackluster. Surrounded by violent zealots, Blake will need to stealthily progress through the rustic environments or else be eviscerated, forcing him to take refuge in nearby homes, hiding in barrels, or crawling through tall grass. Fortunately for him, he's brought along his trusty camcorder, complete with zooming and night vision, making it easier to survey his location. There are moments early on where Outlast delivers the sensation of being hunted anxiously scurrying away from the watchful eyes of unhinged psychopaths. Sadly, it doesn't last long, as the AI wildly fluctuates and the environment's obvious barricades funnel players towards the next event. It's hard to be afraid of the unknown when there's a plain selection of walking routes that can only be overcome by a single solution, relegating desperate trials to linear trial and error. At the start, Outlast makes clear that Blake is here to document, not avenge. But these design choices make him a complete idiot. Brave enough to venture into death, bold enough to push back attacking enemies, and yet too stupid to prepare any sort of self-defense despite his numerous encounters. In both mechanics and intent, Blake's journey doesn't make much sense. Upon discovering an especially horrific scene, he records the evidence with his camcorder, obscuring the appalling incidents with a red circle and camcorder graphics. Though there's an admirable concept here, allowing players to piece together the history later on, it takes the initial thrill away. Outlast 2's gameplay boils down to simple pathfinding and pattern recognition, and with the only rewards being more batteries and bandages, it never feels like there's anything truly at stake beyond a brief loading screen and another go. Most of the time, it's easier to simply die than to run away. Yes, Outlast's gameplay and narrative severely underdeliver, but its evocative presentation is its strongest attribute. With little else to protect himself, Blake will heavily rely on the enhanced vision of his semi-pro camcorder. The graphics take real care into emulating the heavy artifacting and visual noise of its limited sensor. In fact, there's a commendable amount of small details, such as unique fonts on letters and fine textures given to the grisly backwoods and sterile school hallways, with the accurate lighting of campfires and fluorescent tubes, as well as a disturbing amount of grotesque features on every mutilated enemy and a talented voice cast that delivers the intense dialogue with believable possession and terror. So, is it worth it? No. With the exception of its art and graphics, Outlast 2 is, in a word, cheap. 
Its most effective horror comes in jump scares, its narrative is cheesy and derivative, and the gameplay is based around memorization. Everything depends on Outlast's ability to frighten, and because it doesn't, the rest falls flat. Outlast 2 is currently available on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC for $40. If you've had a chance to play it, let me know what you thought, and if you haven't, let me know if you plan on picking it up. My name is Colin Tanner, and I'll see you in the next video.